Women podcast. For your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Northern Power Women podcast. I don't know if you've noticed, but things have been a little bit different since lockdown. Yes, I'm Sam Walker, still with you here, of course, but now every single week and every single week, you also get to hear what has been going on in the world and the life of our great leader, the one and only Simone Roche. Simone, hello. Uh, Hey, Sam. Do you know what? I'm loving our weekly catch ups. We've always stayed in contact, haven't we, since you've flown across the Atlantic to Arizona, but I really do enjoy these weekly chats talking about all things COVID-19, Northern Power Women and and beyond. Well, and beyond. (laughs) Who knows which rabbit hole we'll go down this week, but we really want to just be here for you every single week. We know it's really challenging times. We know perhaps you might be busier than you've ever been in your entire life in your career, or maybe you're at a point where you might have been furloughed. Maybe you might have unfortunately lost your job or just don't really know what the future holds for you. So every single week here on the Northern Power Women podcast, we hope we can just have a chat, just talk about what's been going on in the world of work and business, especially for you, our Northern Power Women. But if there's anything you want to know about, if there's any resources you'd love to find out more about, anyone you'd love to hear from, do get in touch because this podcast really is for you every single week. Podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. Com. So what's been to do in your world this week, Simone? I think it's been a, a strange week. I've had lots and lots of different calls with, you know, different people from different organizations, different levels, and people seem to be having a very roller coaster. You know, I just I just came off the call with with somebody just earlier and she's like, I felt quite grumpy this week and I'm not quite sure why. Mm. You know, we knew we were going to be in another three weeks of lockdown or whatever, but it's just I think because the the when we get these regular daily briefings the outlook is so varied you know for yeah. uh, the medical chief medical officer we're talking you know there was talk yesterday this could be another calendar year um and you're like calendar year from march calendar year from the end of this year when is that and that's that's a long time away so i think people are really considering what the new norms are and yeah. you know i spoke to someone else this morning and he's held up with his husband uh, you know down in canary wharf and he's like i do feel as though and we've said this before that i'm in a in a box set and i go from feeling absolutely ecstatic about working in my pajamas to you know loving the, the the not commuting to then just feeling get me out of here we're all in different sort of flux dates i think at the moment um but i think i think i am seeing that more of we do have a crack on sort of spirit don't we in the in the yeah. uk we we talked about captain tom last week who now i think has has hit almost 30 million Good and put a record out with michael ball just saying <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're seeing lots of this you know the different you know there's a um a big night in event put on the bbc i think there was the the living room live aid at the weekend which was a little bit random i have to say but you know but we're definitely seeing different things uh different opportunities different people coming together to either raise money or just like i saw yesterday um in the back garden of uh, a home in salford two sisters under the age of eight have made something like two thousand little angels little glass angels that they then handwrite everyone and send them out to um, essential and care workers which i think it's stuff like that that spirit i yeah. see but i definitely see a yeah just an interesting so i think there is no such thing as a well, what's your week been like this week it's just varied and random it really is. And it's it's interesting you say about that roller coaster aspect of it all because I think there have been some people who've really been struggling with being on lockdown and there are other people who have just been like breezing along. And in fact what's now happening is both those different sets of emotions are finding that they're every day they're different. So maybe if you have been breezing along, you're now really struggling. Or maybe you've been struggling, there's been a sort of sense of acceptance. And it goes back, doesn't it, to there is no right or wrong way to feel. I was talking to a couple of retailers in Oklahoma City a couple of days ago who literally set up their second shop three weeks before lockdown kicked in. I mean, poor them. It's like the worst timing in the world. But they were talking about still trying to engage with their customers and saying, but you know what the thing is? Some days you want to lie in bed and watch Netflix. And that's okay because they're both trying Mm. to keep their business going. And they've said some days we're super 
you know, involved on social media. We're reaching out to our customers on Instagram. We're sending out newsletters. And on those days, actually, what we try and do is plan content for the days that we know that we won't feel good. And so when we get, wake up one morning and think this is a eating cookies, watching Netflix day, that's OK, because you've kind of planned for that and you know that you're not letting yourself down and your business down. It, I think it is. It's OK to be OK. And I think this week, you know, what we've seen the schools go back, so to speak, or not go back. You know, the homeschooling came back into play again this week. And, um, you know, there is, we, we talked about last week, didn't we, about doing, you know, uh, our guilty pleasures and doing random, awful and great pictures and stuff like that and saying it's OK not to have to, you know, hit the bar. But there's definitely an element with that with this home school, homeschooling. And a, a couple of the, you know, uh, people I've been talking to this week have said it's ramped up. It's almost like they they jumped into the the homeschooling and the school sent home various information. Now it's almost like you're getting seven pieces of of tutoring to do per mm. student per day. And you know one of you know one of my team is furloughed. She's got three three young ones and she's got three different ages. So therefore di- three different curriculums to try and deliver. It's and then you know trying to you know, run a home and everything at the end of it as well. So it's really challenging. So yeah. I, I think there's, you know, I, I, and I don't, I, I don't envy, I know your homeschooling as well. It's, it's, there's no guidebooks with this, are there? And there's so much information out there. It must be really hard to kind of navigate, you know, what the best to do. But equally, I think, again, one conversation I've just had just, just before was, you know, what people are not relishing is seeing the, we used to do loads of Instagram posts, didn't we, of our food. Now people are Instagramming the school timetables. No, <laughs> stop doing it. Stop doing it now. Stop sharing off. Let it okay not to be okay. It's okay to sort of break the cycle. <laughs> it really is. And it's hard because I've definitely had days when I've just thought I am letting my children down. I'm not really overseeing the schoolwork in the way that I should, especially my eight-year-old. My 12-year-old's pretty self sufficient she's quite motivated I'm saying this Simone I presume she's not in a room just playing games but I mean frankly who knows um but you know I go and talk to her every day go through it all she shows me the work that she's done but it's just a tick box on an email you know in a google classroom but my little one I mean I know that I've said to her right these are the three things to do this morning every time I walk through for my office she's not there oh I'm just on a break she says I'm just on a break and I'm sure (laughs) she's not getting everything done that she needs to get done she's also eight and we are in unprecedented yeah. times. And I taught her how to play poker last night and she absolutely thrashed a lot of us. So I'm thinking, well, let's think about life <laughs> lessons. If she's never going to get a job because the economy's broken down, maybe she can go to Vegas once it's open and win a million on poker. I'm trying to I'm trying to cover all options here. <laughs> she knows that I got off one of my pals you know we do we keep sending our whatsapp messages out our check-in you know even if it's just a hey how are you doing and, yes. a, and, and then unusual gif or whatever and uh, my, my pal she sent me a message back to say yep i'm trying to do my job as sales and i'm trying to do my my whole homeschooling and her husband runs his own uh, construction business and but what paul has been doing really really well is she knows now how to clad out a new sort of little pop-up garden office wow. she now knows, knows how daddy changes the tire she now knows all this stuff so absolutely she's yeah. going to be all over that practical stuff but she's only four <laughs> that's brilliant i mean this is what we must 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 remind ourselves i've been doing a lot more cooking with my girls i would always cook with the girls and we'd always bake cakes and bake little pastries and cheese puffs and that sort of thing but what i am getting them to do more and more now is help prepare the meal at lunchtime and the meal in the evening because with the best will in the world when you're working and your children are at home quite often they get home from school they're exhausted they want to have a bit of a rest I would quite often make dinner and not include them perhaps as much as I could have that has now changed so they are learning different skills which I think yeah let's give ourselves a break this whole work-life balance that we constantly beat ourselves up about now's the time that we really need to remember stop beating yourself up it is okay and you know one thing that I've been really kind of focused on this week is the the word empathy last week you know there was a report out about the seven countries that seem to be dealing with or have dealt with COVID so far, you know, so happen to be led by women. Yeah. And you talk about what, the, you know, we always talk about the, you get any book and you can talk about the most effective traits of leaders or whatever. What You know what, let's revisit that. Angela Merkel has been praised and she isn't often praised, you know, she can be criticised, but she was 
she gave such a great speech that was heard by something like 25 million wow. that was intense, vivid, emotionally. But the big thing that she did was gave truth. She gave clarity. She set a stall out and set a path. And because it was so clear, the, the audience followed that delivered that and that's why Germany or where they are in, in the COVID battle now and and obviously we, we talked about Jacinda Ahern before she is you know winning armies of fans isn't she and uh, the empathy that when she talked about the Easter bunny the other week when she talked in a press conference and said you know I think it's important that you know that the Easter bunny has to maintain those two meter um, safe distancing <laughs> measures you know, so it might just be a little slower getting to you, but I think there's just different things, these different traits of truth, love, respect, empathy that are coming out. Humanness. It is absolutely humanness, but that is absolutely coming across our work and life boundaries. I'm seeing that blurring of those boundaries, and I think there's a lot of good in that. I think we've got to take the good from this. Yeah, you're right. You're completely right. I wonder something that's been happening here in the United States that I haven't seen any evidence of in England, and that's people really protesting. I mean, actually on the streets protesting here in the States, but protesting the lockdown. You might have seen, of course, huge, huge protests across Michigan. One happened here in Phoenix this week. In fact, a lot of nurses actually went out and stood on the streets with their arms folded in front of the protesters to try and make a a point about what are you doing. The press being what it is here in the United States, those health workers were then called out for being fake. They were called actors. Uh, One one actual woman who's a a Republican ex-senator, who's a doctor herself, said, look at all these people. What a coincidence. They're all wearing the same clothes. And it's like, yeah, they're wearing scrubs. They're nurses. But, (laughs) you know, uh, this this whole fake news that the president of this country has managed to really whip up here in the States has meant that even when nurses and healthcare workers have stood out on the streets to protest, against the protesters protesting lockdown they've been called fake they've been called actors they've also been vilified for what are you doing standing out on the streets you should be inside saving lives when these are people who actually weren't on shift who came to try and make a stand against these people to say look you being out and about in your thousands is going to cause people to lose their lives but there's this I can't get my head around it, Simone, because I suppose it's not our culture and it's not the way that we've been brought up in the UK. But this notion of freedom with a, you know, in inverted commas, freedom that the Americans feel they're entitled to because this is what the country was founded on. You know, there's a big, big dialogue going on with, you know, if you want to stay at home, that's fine. But you cannot tell me to stay at home because that absolutely is an abuse of my constitutional rights, of my right to freedom. And that is something I just can't get my head around. There's this kind of lack only amongst a small number of society this lack of empathy is a word you've just used and a lack of consideration for other people because would it it, it, it invalidates my constitutional rights and it's just a really yeah. strange strange concept it is and, and we have had a you know what three or four years where the marches have risen in the uk you know whether it's been about Brexit, whether it's been about the women's marches, whether it's been about when Trump came, we, we there has been a, a rise in in the marches over here. Um, but there is not, I've not seen anything around mm. lockdown at all, absolutely nothing. So it's really interesting that we can often follow and be steered by the ways of the the, the US and and that you know and, and that way. But mm. that that's not happening here, and it's it's crazy to think that you've got healthcare workers who are protesting the protest that are equally away from where they should be doing because they're so passionate that these protesters are going to cause them more you know more havoc in fact there's been it's a mass gathering right and i think it was in washington this week there's something two and a half thousand at a mass gathering what is that going to look like in uh, in 14 days time you know Mm. the stats will tell won't they and it's scary times but it is it's that is it ignorance is that the right word i'm not i'm not sure but it's just something that is fundamentally flawed that thinks absolutely why why the country was formed in the founding fathers not I, I get that but this is a war we're in a, we're in a totally different scenario now where we are fighting an unseen warrior mm. and coming together on the street is not going to find us a vaccine is it it's not going to find us a cure it's only going to spread it i have to say i'm i'm open jordan eye rolling on that 
I am doing the world's biggest eye roll currently from Arizona. Right, come on, let's get some real wisdom, not us two banging on about stuff, Simone, some real wisdom on the (laughs) podcast now. It is, of course, time for our life lessons. Thank you so much to our brilliant Northern Power Women hive mind. If you have sent in your life lessons to us, it's just a bunch of questions. You pick five, you impart your wisdom on the rest of the Northern Power Women network. And it's just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to hear your advice. As I've said in previous weeks, I, these rattle around my head all week and I'm learning so much. So thank you. We appreciate it. This week, it is the turn of the wonderful Sam White, Simone. Oh, I love Sam White. Sam was our entrepreneur of the year a few years ago. And this year is in our power list. Sam and I have been having weekly video chats. And I think they've been quite cathartic. And so I, I just had to ask her to record these uh, life lessons for us. So I can't wait to hear them. Sam White, CEO um, and founder of Freedom Services Group. One piece of advice that really stuck with me, that would have to be we are all heroes in our own story. And the, the important thing for that with me is to understand that even when I'm in conflict with somebody, there's a good chance that their perception of the situation is that they're the good guy and I'm the bad guy. And so I always try and ask myself, how could the other person perceive themselves as the hero in this situation? And where might I be the villain? What advice would I pass on to someone who is just starting their career? Um, I would say don't overthink it and don't assume that whatever job you're taking has to be for life. It's okay to try stuff out and decide it's not for you and move on to something else. Don't see that as a failure, see that as a chance to experience something and decide ultimately what's the thing for you. What would you tell the 25-year-old you about work-life balance? Um, I would tell the 25-year-old me to put down the fast food and stop smoking. (laughs) Take care of myself because you function far better if you uh, have first taken care of your health and your well-being and you need to spend time with the people that you love and um, getting some fresh air and exercising and all those things to be the best version of yourself at work. Tell us about a time you have to be resilient. When I was 23, in a three-month period, I broke my leg, uh, split up with my boyfriend, left my job and my mum died. At the time, it felt like the universe was just crashing wave after wave after wave over me um, and it was going to be difficult to get back up. What I know now is that as long as you take it one day at a time, find the wins in those individual days and just keep getting up, eventually you will get out of the other side and you'll be stronger and better for it. Give us an example of when a strong business network came into its own. Um, That would be recently with Northern Power. I was contacted by a business associate of mine who had got access to PPE equipment, um, reached out to Northern Power and Simone and said, um, do you know anyone that may be able to benefit from this? And eventually through Simone's immense network, um, ended up getting in contact with the cabinet office. So we'll see how that goes. But I, you know, I was absolutely blown away by the amount of people in Simone's network that responded and wanted to help and got involved. And so um, I think it really is testament to how these networks can, can really help everybody. Amazing stuff from the brilliant Sam White. Thank you so much. And of course, if you would like to share your life lessons with us, we will send you a bunch of questions. You pick five and send us your voice memo from your smartphone. It's that simple. And we love, love, love hearing from you. So get in touch, podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. Can you believe it, Simone? It's another week, almost all wrapped up. Before you head off into the sunset in Liverpool, how's your jigsaw game going this week? I'm not going to lie, I've had a bit of a drought this week. It has been a little bit busy. But then saying that, I'm going to have to be honest, is I got a new jigsaw that came, got it off eBay, let it sort of sit for 72 hours before I opened it. Really thin, flimsy pieces. So I think I'm also becoming a little bit of a jigsaw snob because (laughs) they don't fit right together. I'm really saying this out loud. (laughs) So just to get it straight, Simone Roche, founder of Northern Power Women, MBE, Brackets, jigsaw snob. Uh, I just want to get your full title out there. That's no worries at all. (laughs) (laughs) 
Simone, marvellous as ever to talk to you. Brilliant. And thank you, everyone, for sharing where you're hearing and listening to our podcast from each week. Thank you so much for joining us. Speak to you next week. So there we go. Another week of the Northern Power Women podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening. We love to hear your feedback wherever you're listening from, as Simone said. Send us a tweet at North Power Women or get in touch on Instagram at Northern Power Women. The next episode will be coming for you on the 4th of May, which is a year to the day that I moved to the United States, which is completely terrifying. I do not know. I know. I do not know where that time has gone. Uh, But thanks again so much for listening. I'm Sam Walker and the Northern Power Women podcast is a What Goes On Media production.